growing up in northern Appalachia, southern Ohio specifically, near the banks of the Ohio River and Kentucky, I learned at an early age to be a listener because I had a desire to know what was going on. And the reason I became a listener and what I later became aware of as a gossip stopper was by learning the hard way and hearing stories about how people were hurt by gossip. So in my cultural context of Southern Ohio, I was one generation away from being a farmhand. My cousins still worked on the farm somewhat, but it wasn't the bread and butter of the family anymore. But on the other hand, children were still expected to be outside all day, not in the house, disrupting grown-up work, but out playing, unless there maybe was a blizzard. We were shoved out the door first thing in the morning and went on many adventures. But at the end of the day, usually soaking wet and cold, we would sit by the wood stove and drink tea and listen to the grown-ups. And we were very quickly caught on that the quieter we were, the more information that we could gather. Now, not knowing the pain that gossip caused, only the temptation to know what was going on, I once told what would be considered a family secret. It not only hurt the person that I was telling the gossip about, it hurt me and it hurt a lot of other people. One other example I can think of is when a cousin of mine, who was 11 at the time, and I think I was about 15, not quite old enough to sit at the grown-ups table, she had a problem at school. She was being picked on. And when I asked her what happened, she said that all the kids in school were talking about this person named Mick Esar and how much they were a bad person and they they stunk and all this stuff and she kind of got sucked into it but she really didn't know who Mick Esar was. One of her friends took her aside one day and said, listen, Mick Esar is actually your name spelled backwards. They're talking about you right in front of you and you need to be careful and not talk about yourself in the same way. And that takes me to wondering Wondering about information that is necessary to share to keep people safe and wondering about when it's okay not to tell the person who is the victim of the gossip what's going on. So I like the Urban Dictionary and I want to read you the top definition of what gossip is and you'll be surprised by some of the strength of the language. The sinful act of withholding love or forgiveness from those who didn't treat us fairly or had wronged us. We want to get even by blaming or cursing them. It goes on to say that gossip is the underrated cause of most human problems in the workplace because we just can't control our tongues which we use to both bless and belittle others. There's a tension there, right? Like a tension between how we share information and what information we share. Are we sharing it because it's our way of getting back at someone? Are we sharing it to keep someone safe? What is our motivation for sharing it? Are we sharing it so the person who's the subject of the gossip hears what we think about them? All of those things are traps, traps into losing grip on our relationships with people. So, but what do we do about it? You can't just stop gossip, or can you? One of the things that I learned is that by becoming non-anxious in the presence of someone who is gossiping, there are some actual ways that we can deflect it and keep it from spreading. So here are tips for that. First of all, try to change the subject. If they keep on gossiping, you can try asking curious questions about the person they're talking about 
or even state facts that you know. One great question is to say, why are you telling me this? Is this your story to tell? I say that to my kids all the time when they're tattling. Tattling and gossip pretty much go hand in hand, don't they? Tattling is oftentimes motivated by wanting revenge on another kid. So, or grown up for that matter. The things I want to go back to is that we can choose to use our tongues to either bless or curse someone. So how do we bless the person who's being gossiped about? First things first, we can hold them in good intentions in our heart. And then we really need to go through a process of discernment and decide if it is really the best thing for them to hear about the gossip. The story I told about my little cousin, I'm not sure that knowing they were talking about her was the best strategy for her friend who was trying to stop the gossip. Perhaps that friend standing up to the other friends may have been a little easier on everyone involved. I also know that our hearts can be tender around our mistakes and that when people are talking about them behind our backs, that it is very painful. Our desire to know needs to be balanced in the tension between the reason we need to know and our safety. I am not condoning secrets. I am not condoning protecting people who hurt folks. What I am saying, though, is finding the motivation and the context behind the gossip can really stop what's going on. It can clear up misunderstandings. And it can cause you and your non-anxious self, your non-anxious presence to spread through the system of whatever place you're facing gossip. I know gossip is tempting. Trust me, I love a good people magazine laying in the airport. I know these things, this need to know, this is a temptation that we have to use our principles to address. One thing we can ask ourselves is, is this information really expressing the inherent worth and dignity of all the parties involved? Or are you using your tongue to curse someone or bless them?